The sunniest big city in America is shattering the worst kind of records for relentlessly high temperatures and the body count that follows. It's so dangerous when then that, that critical area, they're literally, it's cooking of the brain and the, really the organs are starting to shut down. We're trying to get them below that heat stroke range uh, before we even get to the hospital. After the heat killed 645 souls in Maricopa County last year, body bags and ice are now standard equipment on every ambulance and fire truck. As Phoenix learns the hard way that it's not just the heat, it's the vulnerability. As always, the most vulnerable population in our communities are the young and the old. We unfortunately had a fatality on one of our hiking trails with a 10 year old. We have elderly people that can't compensate as well in their homes if their air conditioning is out. We have a lot of our folks that do landscaping, construction, they're working outside, we need to get to them. And then of course we have our unhoused, our population that's out on the streets trying to seek coverage. Say brother, you need some water? I have some ice. One challenge that's very much on my mind is about 65% of the people we've lost recently had a, an addiction. Kate Gallego studied environmental science at Harvard, and when she became Phoenix mayor five years ago, she learned quickly how an overheated environment adds life or death urgency to common problems like affordable housing and addiction. We lost way too many people who were under the influence of methamphetamines and didn't go inside or didn't cool down when they needed to. These are self-contained solar modified shipping containers that can operate for up to 12 hours without being plugged into any energy resource. The crisis spurred both the creation of Arizona's first chief heat officer. Oh yeah, it feels nice. <laughs> and the conversion of 18 cool tainers to get people off the scorching streets. Can you sit up for me please? We gotta work on hydration. Overnight temps can stay above 90, so Phoenix now has its first 24-hour cooling centers. And since neighborhoods with lots of trees can be around 20 degrees cooler than those without, both city and state have laid out policies of shade equity. Your office is very hot, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, is your this is my office, <laughs> yeah. Informed by science that measures how heat bounces off concrete. So we chose to live in the desert, it's hot no matter what, but how can we create microclimates that are cooler than the surrounding environment, and also how can we reduce the temperature of the surrounding environment. Phoenix is among the Arizona cities set to share in the one and a half billion dollars set aside for urban tree planting in the Inflation Reduction Act. And in a land of low slung construction, they want more urban canyons and built breezeways. When I was first elected, we pushed buildings to not go into the public sidewalk areas. And now we're saying we want to encourage it we have a goal for 70% of our heavily walked areas to have shade cover because it can make a huge difference in how comfortable you are outside. But this takes time and the heat won't wait. So day to day, it's about saving lives. One icy body bag at a time. Come talk to us. We'll tell you what we've learned. Don't underestimate it. Buy the bigger ice machines. Be prepared, get ready. Bill Weir, CNN, Phoenix.